welcome back to another session of the Whirlwind of Weezer. Tonight we will be tackling the years 1994, 1995, 1996, as well as 1997. Just a little bit, I think. So we'll be talking about Pinkerton in the tours before Pinkerton and songs from the Black Hole that was the intended album before it morphed into Pinkerton. But let's jump right in it's with some, uh, I guess we should start with the Blue Tour. The Blue Tour, in support of the Blue Album, ran from May 7th, 1994 till November 23rd, 1994 is kind of when they played clubs and then they were an opening act and like kept kind of moving up in the ranks and then tour continues November 26th through December 10th of 1994 where they were the proper headliners so they had like eh, a good several weeks there of properly headlining and then in December of 1994, uh, Rivers starts demoing for Long Time Sunshine. And, uh, ooh, ooh, but well before this, like, middle of the tour in June 94, uh, he did a garage demo of Devotion, featuring that beautiful synth. And that informed his writing process starting for all these beautiful tracks on Pinkerton. And then, uh, not, uh, not too big of a break yet, we move into the World Domination headlining tour that began January 30th, 1995 in, uh, the UK and, uh, that the European the first European leg of this tour, I should say, ran from yeah, January 30th to March 2nd, then beginning on March 10th, did their first U.S. leg, which ran until April 8th, went back to Europe and hit, like, Portugal and Spain, uh, from June 12th until July 9th, and then... Uh, back to the U.S. again, finish it out from July 21st until August 20th. And what's interesting is that, like, early on in these, uh, early on in this tour, and perhaps even towards the end of the Blue Tour itself, but certainly during the World Domination Tour, uh, Getchu had made its way into the set list for their shows. Like, not always, but... It, w it was relatively frequently played and then tired of sex and no one else started to make pop their way up there too well before well before tour's end and on the first European leg of the tour a very uh, <laughs> a whole lot of demos a whole lot of demos were recorded by um, Rivers whole lot of demos. Let's see, so in February, in Hamburg, Germany, Rivers recorded a whole lot of the sequence of what would be pieced together for songs from the Black Hole, including Now I Finally See, Good News, or Dude We're Finally Landing, Oh No, This Is Not For Me, Come To My Pod, Maria's Theme, later retitled Oh Jonas, Blast Off, Super friend, she's had a girl. You won't get with me tonight. I just threw out the love of my dreams. What is this I find? Waiting on you? And who you calling bitch? In the same month, uh, the, the whole band goes into a studio in Paris for the Black Sessions on February 21st, 1995, which is kind of like the first indication of, like, the Pinkerton sound, because they performed all, like, really, <laughs> I guess, 
the band's best of the Blue Album. They performed Buddy Holly, No One Else, The World Has Turned and Left Me Here, Say It Ain't So, Undone, and Surf Wax America. But you hear kind of like the grittier, more feedback, drenched uh, sound that Pinkerton listeners would become intimately acquainted with. And it sounded, you know, decently similar to like the demos for the Blue Album, but with little more intensity because they weren't working on the songs at this point. They knew the songs. They were just fleshing out like how they wanted it to sound when they performed them. Which is very cool, in my opinion. Alright, so... Right after the conclusion of the World Domination Tour, sessions would begin in earnest. Let's see, they started on August August 8th back at Electric Lady Studios where they recorded the Blue Album with Rick Kasich. Only this time there's no Rick around. And on this day maybe not this day, but in their session, in their Okay, maybe it was the first day, or around the first day. They did the Long Time Sunshine special coda. But they also tracked the drums. Like two weeks of... Tra- no, not just the drums, everything. Everything. For uh, Why Bother, No Other One, Get You, and Tired of Sex. And these were all done by August 27th, I guess. Or maybe that's when they started tracking them. But they were in the electric studio and... Electric Lady Studios until, like, early September, it looks like, of 1995. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe just August 27th might have been the end of their stint? I don't know. At any rate, sometime between August 8th and August 27th, they did the Long Time Sunshine Special Coda, and they tracked Why Bother, No Other One Gets You, and Tired of Sex. And then in September of 95, at some point, they moved into Apache Studios and were there until I, maybe early October. I don't really have precise dates for this, if, if you haven't noticed, but the general time frame, at least, to show you know, the progression of how how the album was shaping up. But in, the, in these Ford Apache Studios sessions, they did they worked on Tired of Sex, Get You, No Other One, and Why Bother. As well as Long Time Sunshine. Uh, and I just threw out the love of my dreams. Potentially Devotion and You Gave Your Love to Me Softly were both recorded here. It was either here or Electric Lady, but I th- I'm more comfortable with saying Fort Apache. And at this point they were still definitely like headlong into uh, songs from the Black Hole. And, uh, we got two, uh, track listings for this, both with their merits, although I gotta say I definitely lean more towards set one, even if set two is trimmed down ever so slightly and might have newer, slightly better songs on it, but I feel like set one has, it flows and it tells the story that Rivers wanted to tell. Which was basically a story of, like, an analog of him believing he wanted to be a rock star for so long, ever since his youth when he got his first guitar, and uh, then hitting the big time with the Blue Album and touring extensively and getting, like, really worn out from it. And then, like, you know, being pressured into, like, having a new album and, like, the pressure of, like, they challenging themselves with producing it something they had said they were going to do for the Blue Album, and then during the Blue Album were like, we'll record. Like, their their manager, Todd, was like, why don't you save that for the second album? Like, you definitely do it for the second one. So now they're kind of, like, <laughs> held up to that, I guess. I don't really know if that really factored into it at all, but I'd like to think it did. Uh... And, like, Songs from Black Hole is basically like, oh, oh he's got everything basically being handed to him, but 
he still feels like a worthless piece of shit and <laughs> and I guess comes to accept it and is cool with it in the end but oh, okay, I'll just read the songs off so set list one had blast off you won't get with me tonight Maria's theme later to be retitled on Jonas come to my pod this is not for me tired of sex super friend she's had a girl good news now I finally see get you I just threw out the love of my dreams no other one devotion what is this I find long time sunshine and a long time sunshine reprise now track list 2 starts off with blast off and goes into who you call in bitch and then oh Jonas uh, please remember come to my pod oh no this is not for me tired of sex she's had a girl dude we're finally landing I retitled good news uh, now I finally see I just threw out the love of my dreams super friend and a super friend reprise you won't get with me tonight and what is this I find which I think is a weird way to end it but maybe that was kind of reflective of like Rivers' uncertainty of I don't know what he's found in his acceptance of his rock star life which he then sort of rejects again after Pinkerton gets released and I'm sure the long process of recording this album didn't help but anyway, I mean, they got back together and they, we got this masterpiece of an album out of it. Even if the songs in the black hole got abandoned, we still got most of the better songs, like, released. I don't know why we don't have a full band version of Super Friend yet, though. It really bugs me. Unless they're playing on the Rivers demo, but I don't, I don't really know. And that's a great, like, I'm cool, I'm glad we have that. But, <laughs> still. <laughs> I don't want some more of this, and like, who you calling bitch was kind of good. I'd rather enjoy that, and I'd love to hear all these reprises. But like, what is this? I find is not really the greatest. Oh no, this is not for me. It's kind of fun. It's just and it's short, so that works. I don't think the first track listing played the story off better than the second one, though, even if the second one had a less sunshiny ending to it. But moving on. Moving on to Rivers Goes and Does a Semester. Or was it two? He does like a semester at Harvard. And they could go into the studio in January of 90, 1996. Yeah, yeah. During, like, winter break. Yeah, yeah. At Sound City Studios. For two weeks, where they record Super Friend. I think that might be the footage you can see on the video capture device. I really want to hear the finalized recording of that. And uh, they also did She's Had a Girl, Dude We're Finally Landing, El Scorcho, and Pink Triangle were recently written and kind of showing like eh, planting the seeds of where the, the album's gonna end up so after the winter break Har uh, Rivers goes back to Harvard and then like a little bit a little bit uh, prior to the end of the semester he goes in for, uh, they, he goes, he meets the boys at the studio in May of 96, where they officially scrap songs from the black hole, partially because in, on October 24th, 1995, so before that January session, but after they had left Ford Apache, Matt Sharp had finished and released Return of the Rentals. He was still the bassist in Weezer at this time. But it featured, like, a synth and fuzz bass and guitar-heavy sound with similar subject matter to what Rivers had written for uh, Songs from the Black Hole. 
So I think that helped Harold and like when it started taking off. I feel like that's when it really hit Rivers. The clip with Rivers is like I guess he did he didn't really want to have that be the main showcase of his next output because like his band members sort of already did that and I guess the public eye would put that together and I guess Rivers just wanted to do something more personal and with less of that synth flourish going on. At least we still got most of those as B-sides. And, <laughs> and ultimately, like, Tired of Sex and Get You uh, were mainstays from the onset of Rivers writing songs for either songs from the Black Hole or Pinkerton. Okay, so they go in the studio in May 96, having scrapped plans for songs from the Black Hole, and they're at Sun City again, and they record The Good Life, Across the Sea, Falling for You, and Butterfly. Then, after the sem semester wraps up, in June 96, they go back in and cut I Swear It's True, Getting Up and Leaving, Waiting on You, and I just threw out the love of my dreams with Rachel Hayden on those sweet vocals. Several months later, it is released on September 24th. Like I said, like a lot of the tracks we got as B-sides, like Ultimately Waiting on You and I Just Threw Out the Love of My Dreams, we got to hear. And those are just some of the best ones. Devotion, we got to hear. You Gave Your Love to Me Softly, although... You gave your love to me softly. It was never really. Fi it, it fits the theme, absolutely. But it was never featured on any of the, at least these two known track lists. But I wouldn't be surprised if it went through quite a few more variations before they scrapped the sequence altogether. Now, following the release, actually no. Prior to the release of the album, they embarked on the Pinkerton tour in August 8th of 1996, which ran through September 8th of 1996. Then they played three shows in LA on September 24th, yeah, September 24th, September 26th, and September 27th. Then they go to Australia and Japan from October 2nd to October 25th. In November, from the 1st of November till December 21st, they are back in the U.S. And here's where I have a little bit more information because I don't have the track listing. Probably dig deeper and find like a couple, but I'm definitely gonna, especially if there's any soundboards, like, hell yeah. Uh... But during this leg of the tour, they had three separate openers. It would either be Super Drag, Placebo, or Ash. Then they uh, switched things up in the new year, January 1st through January 24th, 1997. Still in the U.S., but being opened for Nerf Herder at all dates. Uh, then they fall back into a support position for No Doubt, opening for them from May 24th to July 3rd, 1997. Then they resume their Pinkerton tour on July 5th until July 20th, opening with opener of the Pulsars, and really ending it in Asia from July 29th until August 6th. We're coming back to LA. I think they did one more show. I don't remember where the Michael and Carly tribute figures into this, but at some point towards the end of this, they did that performance you can see on the video capture device and the official YouTube and Weezer B sides. Great channel there. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if it was ran by some member of the band, including Rivers himself, but I don't know. No idea. Might be better to not know, to not really press the issue, but... Check them out if you haven't, if you want to hear some of the crazier, some of the more obscure stuff that I talk about over here. But, I think that about wraps it up for Pinkerton. 
So until next time, we's on.